If you're a student in public schools or graduated from school and you didn't learn about the Million Man March and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, then you are likely a victim of blatant miseducation. It's probably not your fault, but it does, however, show just how horribly the educational system misinforms our youth about the most impactful persons and events most instrumental to our liberation. If you don't know, the Million Man March was the largest, most peaceful demonstration of our unity in the history of the modern world. This event shook up the world on October 16, 1995 at the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Here, well over a million black men of different backgrounds, different religious beliefs, different political ideologies, different fraternities, even different gang affiliations, all came together in peace at the call of the greatest voice of freedom, justice, and equality of this age. I bring to you my leader, my teacher, my guide, my father, your brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Let us receive him. The Million Man March assembled over a million black men on the National Mall without one fight, not one altercation or argument. That's a legitimate miracle never seen before. Yet, isn't it strange that we learn virtually nothing about this powerful history in most public schools or in their history books? Hell, we can barely get a group of us at a family gathering or go a day in public schools without fights breaking out. But under Minister Farrakhan, we find the most proven, effective voice of establishing unity and peace in our communities in ways that the American government has never been able to do with all of its resources. Now think about that. This one black man has been able to do in one day what the American government and all their approved leaders and organizations have never been able to do with all of their resources combined. Yet the mainstream media and Jewish groups like the ADL totally demonized the Million Man March and its convener, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, whom Jewish leaders slandered as the new black Hitler. Now juxtapose the Million Man March to when they demonstrate at the national capital. The results are astonishing. When black people brought the most orderly demonstration of love and peace that Washington, D.C. has ever seen, they called us dangerous and called Minister Farrakhan an anti-Semitic hate teacher. Um, what is he doing if he is not stirring people to become killers? Extraordinarily dangerous. While government leaders outright slandered the man of peace, their own white dissidents stormed the Capitol in a domestic terrorist attack, where they pillaged and looted and even left fecal matter throughout the Capitol building. Wow, any slightly intelligent person can determine who the real peacemakers are and who the real haters are. By the Nation of Islam, a racist, anti-Semitic, extreme group under the openly, openly hateful leader, Louis Farrakhan. Again, you have a black man who brings millions of black and brown people together in peace without one fight, not one altercation, and they called us dangerous, they called us anti-Semitic, they called us hate teaching, Farrakhan is an extraordinarily dangerous man. He's the guy who, um, uh, the Nation of Islam, it, it, they've never denied it, they've never had a problem with it. But then you have some of their people, quote unquote, protest in what became a terrorist attack and tore up the Capitol. But we are the enemies. Come on now. 
It reminds me of how Jesus in the Bible is performing miracles and speaking to the multitudes, which made the Roman and Jewish authorities enraged because they couldn't do the divine works like him. So they hated him and literally plotted to kill him. That's a dangerous man. And get this, to prove that the Million Man March was not just a strike of luck, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan replicated it three more times in what have proven to be the most independent, organized, and largest displays of love and peace and discipline at the nation's capital. You got the Million Man March of 1995, the Million Family March of 2000, the Millions More Movement of 2005, and the Justice or Else Gathering on 10 10 15. The Million Man March sparked these and other demonstrations like the Million Women's March of 1997. And don't forget the Women's March that also caught a lot of hate from the ADL when they found out many of the organizers were supported by Minister Farrakhan. Now, if our leaders and educators are truly concerned with making safe schools and communities, wouldn't it make sense for us to consult those who've provided the best models of garnering peace and unity in our communities? The minister led millions of black men throughout this country to pledge before the world to take the responsibility of being the loving, responsible husbands and fathers, and to be the brothers, and to put an end to all the senseless killings, and, and to be the responsible leaders and protectors of our families, you know, to protect our girls and children and communities. Poor. Intelligent Americans know it is the collapse of the traditional family that is wreaking havoc in the African-American community. 72% of black babies are born to single mothers. If they would start talking about the responsibilities of fatherhood. The dependency on welfare was breaking up black families. The breakdown of the black family and an extraordinarily dysfunctional, toxic inner city culture. <laughs> but look at the hypocrisy of these American leaders who would blame broken families as being the problem Yet they'll turn around and be the main ones who would oppose Minister Farrakhan and the nation for restoring black families in ways that white America never would. That's a dangerous man. But unfortunately, many American leaders try to sweep the Million Man March and the Honorable Minister Farrakhan's revolutionary voice and work under the rug. And that's because the U.S. government objectives, along with most of the groups who influence public education, are the same ones who diametrically oppose real black unity and freedom from white dominance. Yep, organizations like the Anti-Defamation League or ADL, who have a proven history of anti-black racism and deeds, they influence programs and curriculum in public schools throughout America. The same ADL that advised the FBI throughout its counterintelligence objectives against black leaders and organizations. The same ADL that argued that black economic unity is somehow anti-Semitic is one of the same groups that influences our children's education and influences public policies. This is the same group that threatened black leaders from supporting the Million Man March's convener. And you wonder why they've deprived our children from benefiting from the wisdom and guidance of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, who has done more for our independence and unity and empowerment than any voice among us today. Because remember, they consider our unity and economic empowerment to be anti-Semitic hate teachings. And they've worked with government and educational systems to enact policies accordingly. Now, many states across the country have now adopted laws and policies that have made it virtually illegal for public school teachers 
to teach certain truths about slavery and history. Because if the truth is known, the people would find out who the hidden hands are behind the mass deception and racism that has plagued our communities. And one of their greatest fears is that the young Americans will find out the truth about those gatekeepers behind this widespread corruption. Because if this young generation knows the truth, they're gonna stand up and do something about it. In short, that's why most public schools have been forced to hide the truth about our great leaders like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and those revolutionary moments in history like the Million Man March. Oh, there's so much more that needs to be shared on this important topic, so let's be sure to stay united and stay connected and long live the spirit of the Million Man March. <laughs>